Hello, welcome to GD exam preparation class. I am your host and instructor, Ruben Herrera. And in this video, my friends, we're going to continue with our series of videos and lessons on reason into language arts for our GED exam preparation. And our topic for today is going to be using writing mechanics. So let's get started. Okay. For our first topic, my friends, I want to talk about the comma use. Uh, we need to make sure that we know how to use commas. Okay. So this is what I have. As a general rule, commas indicate where readers will pause in a sentence if they were reading it aloud. In general, a comma should follow a introductory word, phrase, or clause to separate the introductory element from the main part of the sentence. For example, I have some sentences right here where we use the commas or try to use the commas correctly. For example, yes, listing your ideas can be very helpful. Although Carla ran for the bus, she missed it. Keith, Darnell, Marisol, and Doug are ready to take the GED test. Okay, so as you can tell right here, my friends, we use commas uh, on the first example right here. We use commas as an uh, to separate a introductory word. Uh, on the second example right here, we use a comma for separated two clauses, and then on that third example we use a comma to separate subjects okay very nice the subjects not only can be people but they can be also be places or things okay very nice let us go into our next topic our next topic is capitalization so we need to learn and we need to make sure that we know how to capitalize correctly okay so first of all, my friends, we capitalize proper nouns, okay? A proper noun is the name of a specific person, place, or thing, or idea, okay? We also capitalize the names of proper adjectives. A proper adjective is form is form from a proper noun, okay? We also capitalize a title, the title of a person's, okay? But we only capitalize the title of a person whenever the name of the person is going to go along with that title. For example, if we're going to say, if we're going to say the professor, okay, we can. We don't have to capitalize professor. But if we're going to say Professor Ruben, then we have to capitalize prof, uh, professor, the title, and indeed we have to capitalize the name. Okay. Uh, next, I have right here. We need to capitalize names of holidays, days of the weeks, and months, okay? Uh, also, we capitalize names of a specific school courses in all languages. Well, um, that is pretty much a given. We pretty much capitalize all the names of schools and libraries because they're all named after a person, and a person is a proper noun. Um, we do capitalize uh, pretty much any school course or subject and this is something that a lot of people don't know that we also capitalize all languages for example if we're going to write the word is spanish french english so we capitalize all those words too we also capitalize at the beginning of a sentence and we also capitalize after a period as you as you've been seeing it here in these uh, presentations Okay, so very nice. Make sure that you guys study that. For our next topic, I have possessiveness and contractions. Okay, so a possessive shows ownerships. We use apostrophes with possessive nouns. Okay, do not use apostrophes with possessive nouns. Okay, and I don't have an example for that, but right now I have an example for a possessive. For example, right here, I have the car's tires are new. So you see how we have car and then apostrophe S, tires. So what we're saying here is that, you know, these tires belong to the car, you know, and that they are new. Very nice. So this is a possessive or, uh, yeah, these are called possessives. Now, a contraction, in the other hand, is very easy to get confused. A contraction shortens two words by combining the second word with the first and leaving out one or more letters. 
an apostrophe takes the place of the missing letters. For example, I have right here, I have here, here is, and here is. Okay, you see how it makes the word shorter, or the two words, they're combined and it makes it shorter. Uh, also, for example, you can say you are, or you can say your. Okay, so very nice. So these are examples of uh, possessives and contractions. Okay, let us go into our next topic. Our next topic right here is called homonyms. Okay, homonyms are words that sound alike but are spelled differently and have different meanings. On your books, my friends, or somewhere you can find examples of homonyms and make sure that you use the correct words for what you are trying to write about. For example, I have two examples right here. I have the words board and board. They both sound almost the same, but the first word, board, it means like a whiteboard or a piece of cardboard. And the second word, bored, means that you are bored, like these lessons that I'm giving to you. Well, I hope you're not bored. But anyways, yes, bored as in not being a muse, okay? Uh, the other two examples that I have right here, I have break. The first one, break and break. The first break means to stop or a car's break. Okay, very nice. And the second break is like taking a break at work or uh, breaking the time or breaking from something or someone or shadowing something into pieces. So make sure, my friends, that we study. I mean, we, you don't have to memorize this by heart, but make sure that you read through this, these homonyms and um, Make sure that you read them, understand them, try to remember them so that you can be, so that when you are tested for this, you choose the correct words. Also, when you are writing the essay part of your test. Okay. And I hope you guys enjoy uh, this video or these lessons as much as I enjoy making this for you. Uh, if you like these lessons, please click on the like or thumbs up button somewhere in there. And if you didn't, don't do anything. And I hope to see you guys in the future in some other lessons. Thank you. Bye-bye.